hi, I'm Shannon. Um, here I am on camera. Huh? Uh, so, over in TikTok land, the last couple days, there has been the conversation about Percy Jackson versus Harry Potter. Specifically, the conversation that popped up was who would win in a fight? And I'm gonna be honest here. I'm not even gonna, like, this is not a video breaking down which one of them would win in that fight because I think you kind of have to be a little bit delusional to think that Harry Potter would ever win against anyone in Percy Jackson, like anybody. They don't need sticks. They don't in order to do things. That's silly to even bring that up. But I did want to take this wonderful opportunity to discuss and just talk about Harry Potter and compare it to Percy Jackson to just make it really abundantly obvious for anyone who may have been confused by this point whether Percy Jackson is better than Harry Potter. So, you know, there's the obvious thing that everyone in the world would ever bring up about, about these two things, which is the people who created them. You know, J.K. Rowling, that, you know, literal fascist who is trying to kill trans people with the money that she makes from the movies and the park and everything else she does. Rick Riordan is an angel, like a an literal angel in our midst. He went to school and met kids that were queer and gender non-conforming and had kids of his own that have disabilities. And with that knowledge and information, wrote an entire book series where literally everyone is disabled and there's multiple people who are queer to make those kids feel like they have a place and that they belong so they don't feel like they that they don't deserve to live when society can make them feel like that sometimes. He literally wants to save people's lives. J.K. Rowling wants to kill them all, so. Like, there's that obvious thing. But let's discuss some of the things that transpire in these works and compare them, shall we say. Cause like Harry Potter, it has the whole, you know, prophecy thing. He's the boy who lived because he was a baby and he didn't die. That's, that's literally, literally the only thing that of why Harry is special is he was a baby and he did not die. He didn't even do anything. He literally just like laid there and cried. And he now has all of this responsibility where like literally everyone he ever meets in the magical world tells him that he's special and that he's different and that he's going to save them all. No pressure. <laughs> and Percy Jackson, Percy is a big three kid. And when you do find out about the prophecy, which does not happen in the first book, the first book exists without that prophecy happening, which is great that he at least has one book before like full-on existential dread starts just like hammering away at his head. When the prophecy is done, it's it says that it will be a big three kid that will be it, but by that point we know that there's more than just him out there that is a big three kid. So there's an actual like literal choice when it comes to Percy. Like he has to decide if he wants to be the prophecy kid or not. If he doesn't decide to be the prophecy kid in the third book, which is when he like officially is like, yes, I'll do this, Nico would have to do it. And Harry is like basically told over and over again, like you're gonna be the prophecy kid, you are the prophecy kid. No matter what you do and what you say, you have to figure this out. Nobody else will save us in like the most helpless society of all time where they're just leaving all of that on these kids, right? When it comes to Percy though, he has to choose whether he wants to do this or not. And the choice that I love that happens in Percy Jackson is that 
it's very easy when you're reading a story like this to be like, well, Percy is going to be the prophecy kid because he's the main character, <laughs> you know? Like, this entire show or book series is based off of him. So if he's not going to be the prophecy kid, then who is it? Like, why am I reading this book series if he's not? That's pretty lazy writing, you know? That's basically what J.K. Rowling does with Harry Potter. When it comes to Percy Jackson, though, it makes sense with Percy's, like, personality that he would be the one to do this. Like, he would be the one to do the hard things because he prioritizes everyone else, like, health and happiness over his own. And that's just, like, part of his personality. Like, he would never, like, he would never, ever leave the prophecy to be handled by Nico, 10-year-old tiny little Nico. He would never do that. It would be out of character for Percy to leave something like this at the feet of another kid. So, thing number two, the abusive family backstory. Yeah, so growing up in an abusive family and reading Harry Potter like I did in high school, which is how old I was when the first Harry Potter movie came out, I was a junior in high school. I will say it was an experience in itself to read a book series where the kid was being abused and was being told that he had to go back to his abusive family's home all the way through to the last book because he was for his protection. But they say it's for his protection when multiple times during the series, Harry gets attacked when he's at the Dursleys. <laughs> Like, he goes on the run in the third book when he blows up his aunt because the Dursleys are so horrible to him. And it's, and they're terrified. And they let, they let the fact that he uses magic outside of school, which he's not allowed to do, because they're so relieved that he's alive, because they're afraid that, he, that Sirius Black, who they think is a serial killer at this point, would be going after him, that they're so happy that he's alive that they don't even care that he broke the rules. Like that entire situation happens because the Dursleys are so horrible. He gets attacked by Dementors in the fifth book. Like he gets attacked at the beginning of every single book, but they keep, they keep saying that he's protected and they keep making him go back there. So, you know, we know that um, Sally gets married to somebody like Gabe, who is a very abusive person. And she gets married to him because he is such a bad person that she thinks that she feels that she has to do that in order to protect Percy from being sent out by monsters who can, who can like tell that he's a good soul who would protect people. And those things are similar, but you know what's not similar? How when in the first book, the very first book of the entire fucking series, he finds out that he's a demigod. And you know what Sally does? She immediately gets divorced from Gabe and also kills him, which like a plus move, I think personally, more abusers should be turned into statues. I, th I think. Think about a world where the other adults at school who are all supposed to be heroes that you're supposed to be looking up to would be knowing that that family is abusive, literally being told by their kids in one of the books that they put like prison bars basically on his window to keep him in that they're not feeding him and all that too and that they still make excuses for him to go back there instead of them one of them saving him from that home if percy was actually being forced to go back and live with gabe past the first book he would just stay at camp if people at camp like chiron and stuff knew what was going on with him at home they would have come they would let him stay there they wouldn't let him leave or he only goes back and like spends the rest of the year and, and not the summertime at camp and not there year round because he loves his mom and he wants to see his mom that's the only reason why he doesn't just stay there like you can't even imagine a world like harry potter existing in percy jackson and these are just like a couple things this is why i think that it's funny when people try to say oh harry potter wasn't that bad like, Harry Potter is a horrible world. It treats people like they're disposable. They, they, just, they just don't care about these heroes. Like, I can't imagine being, like, a magical world that is meant to be better than our own. Telling an 11-year-old kid from that point on that because he didn't die as a baby, he's everyone's messiah. 
and that he doesn't even get a choice or anything and nobody tells him how to do anything and he just has to deal with it like what what did i ever like about harry potter exactly i don't even know <laughs>